Hello, and welcome to the second in a series of films about the standard level organic topic. Um, having talked a little bit about homologous series, we're going to now talk about different types of formula that we use before we start looking at particular examples of those series. So hopefully by the end of this film, um, you'll be able to define the meaning of three different and very important terms. Okay, And they are empirical formula, molecular formula, and structural formula. So here we go. Let's have a look at those definitions first of all, and then we'll try and illustrate them with some examples. Okay, The empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a substance. I'm actually just going to read these out, even though it seems a bit daft. These are really important definitions to remember. Okay, This is the molecular formula, or the definition of a molecular formula. It's the exact number of atoms in one molecule of a substance. And finally, the last type of formula that we need to know for organic chemistry is called a structural formula and this is a formula that shows unambiguously so in other words it leads us, leaves us in no doubt about the way in which the atoms are arranged in a molecule. Okay so they're the definitions make sure perhaps you write them down but certainly that you remember them okay and here's a few illustrations of what we mean so first of all we've got um, uh, molecules with two hydrogens for each carbon. Now this means that there's a ratio of 2H for every 1C. Now there is no simpler whole number ratio than that if we're going to use that ratio. However, you could have a molecule that had the formula C2H4 that would have this empirical formula. This would not be its empirical formula. It would, ha it would have a ratio of two hydrogens to every one carbon. But writing C2H4 is not an empirical formula because that's 4 to 2 is not the simplest whole number ratio. Okay? But I could also have a molecule with C3H6 that would still have this empirical formula. Okay? So in other words, what I'm doing here is I'm writing various molecular formulas. So the exact number of atoms that are in a molecule. And all of these molecular formulas could be represented by this empirical formula. Okay, because this is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in any one of these substances. I mean, I could even imagine um, a substance that had a thousand carbon atoms and two thousand hydrogens, and that would still have that same empirical formula. Okay. Now we're going to have a look. So we've, I suppose we've kind of illustrated not only empirical formulae but molecular formulae there as well. What we're going to do here is we're going to look in a bit more depth at what we mean by structural formulae. Okay? Now here is a formula C2H4. This clearly isn't an empirical formula because we could write that as CH2. Okay? But let's have a think about how many different ways we could actually arrange these atoms. Now, one thing that's really, really important in the organic chemistry topic is that carbon will always form four bonds and hydrogen will always form one. Okay? And this is something that we should be able to figure out because we've drawn Lewis diagrams in the past. But anyway, if I attached two hydrogens to one carbon and then perhaps a third hydrogen to that carbon, then I would have one bond left to join to the other carbon, but I've only got one hydrogen left to play with. Okay, So clearly the structure can't be this, because this carbon has four out of four bonds, but this one only has two. Okay, I could maybe try and put a triple bond in here to make this carbon happy, right? but now this carbon's got six bonds, so that's no good. So I could, when I'm saying, when I'm talking now about a structural formula, I'm drawing the atoms out in this molecular formula so it's clear how they're joined. Now some people will draw what is called a displayed structural formula which shows all the bonds. Okay, But there really is only one way of joining two carbons and four hydrogens. So although this looks just like a molecular formula, it's also a structural formula because it tells me exactly what the structure is because there is only one possible structure. Okay? I could also write this as CH2, CH2, and that's a more commonly seen structural formula which kind of deals with every one of the carbons in the chain in turn. 
okay? But sometimes we see them as a displayed structural formula. If you're asked to draw or write a structural formula, it really doesn't matter what kind you use, just so long as your formula isn't ambiguous about the structure. Now let's have a look at another molecular formula that doesn't tell us exactly what the structure is. Now, without looking at deciding what all these different possible structures are in too much depth at the moment, because we're going to look at things called isomers later on, if I have four carbons in a chain and eight hydrogens, there's a number of different ways of arranging those atoms. Okay, I could have a chain of four with a double bond between the first two, and then two hydrogens there. Eventually I'm probably going to get a little bit lazy about right drawing hydrogens on, on these molecules, but it's actually quite important that you don't just put empty bonds, which people get in the habit of doing because they can't be bothered to draw hydrogens, so some people will just do this and say, oh look, let's just assume that all these empty spaces are hydrogens. I'm going to kind of use my <laughs> privilege and sometimes I'm going to go for the lazy way out, but it's important that you don't just leave them blank. Okay, so there's two different ways of drawing the structure of C4HA, but I could also have a three carbon chain with a branch coming off it and a double one between two of the carbons, in which case I have a hydrogen here. And the other thing about drawing out all the hydrogens is that it does use up a lot of time on the films and Perhaps it's not the most exciting thing, sitting there watching someone drawing lots of hydrogens. But anyway, so here's three different ways of drawing the structure of C4H8. Every one of these formulae that I've drawn now is a structural formula because it's unambiguous about the structure. But notice that this formula is not unambiguous. It could be any one of these three things. So this is a molecular formula but not a structural formula. As I've just touched on on the previous slide, we often see structural formulae written as each carbon in the chain in turn. So this would be CH2 followed by CH followed by CH2 followed by CH3. This one here would be CH3 followed by CH followed by CH followed by CH3. And clearly those two formulas are different and they tell us exactly what the structure is. So they're good as structural formulae. And if I wanted, I could also do this one and that would be CH2 followed by CH and then usually if we've got a branch, we put the branch in brackets to show that we're not carrying on along this chain at the moment. We're kind of going off on a branch before coming back onto the chain and seeing another CH3. Okay, so the things in green are structural formulas. The things in white are structural formulas as well, but not this one here. Okay, but strictly speaking, the white ones are displayed structural formulae and the ones in green are just normal structural formulae. But either one of them is fine as a structural formula because it tells us what the structure is unambiguously. Okay, so hopefully, um, maybe you haven't remembered them yet, but you know what the definitions are and you can go away and commit them to memory, but also you understand what they mean. Okay, so if you've got any questions or comments, as usual, please come and see me before you move too far into the topic or post a comment on YouTube.